In this lesson, we'll look at configuring sound settings. Setting up how sound works in Windows might seem like a task that shouldn't be required. Shouldn't your computer just play your music, beep, and chime at the right times? Well, the answer, of course, is yes. There are many variations on how we get sound from our devices in today's world. Besides built-in speakers, many of us use external speakers, headphones, and wireless speakers. You may find yourself switching audio outputs from time to time. So while Windows audio settings tend to just work as expected when you plug in new speakers or plug in your headphones, you should know how to perform basic tasks like switching between connected audio outputs. It's also good to know how to configure and manage sound events so that a chime from a new email notification doesn't make you jump out of your chair. If you play videos or music on your computer, having a set of speakers or at least headphones is a given. On a desktop computer, you may find quite a few audio connector options ranging from the basic 8th inch green headphone and pink microphone plugs to the higher end digital optical audio connector ports. If you're connecting external speakers, follow the instructions provided with your hardware to be sure your speakers are connected correctly. Now after everything is plugged in correctly, you may want to check your settings in Windows related to sound quality and configuration. Open the settings app and select system. Select sound over here, and you'll see an output device and an input device. Now each of these includes a drop down list, which lets you choose the currently active device. You may not see multiple devices, but if you do, you can select which device you want to use. Under your output device, you have a master volume control. From the notifications area, down on the taskbar, you can also select the playback device and make changes right there. Now we have a nice tool here, app volume and device preferences. When you select this, you'll again see master volume and output and input devices. Below this though, you can get pretty granular. This list will reflect the applications you have installed and that are open. You can adjust the volume for any application separately from here. You can also specify if you want the sound from that application to go to a specific device. So to give you an example of the flexibility that this gives you, I could play Spotify to an external Bluetooth speaker here, while my main output device is set to send everything else to my headphones. So I could have some background music playing with Spotify, but I can still do audio editing work with my headphones on as needed, and each output is isolated from the other. Returning to my main sound settings, we can also use the related links to jump to other areas that impact sound. Bluetooth devices, ease of access, are other settings you may want to check out. The sound control panel has some overlap with our settings that appear in the settings app itself. From here we can select a device and review its properties. There are settings here that are related to volume levels and audio enhancements. Now there's also two other tabs here you should be aware of. In the sounds tab, you can see settings for system sounds. Scroll down this list and you'll see active sounds related to events. For example, this sound may be familiar to you. Now from the drop down I could change this to none, or I could use browse to point to my own preferred WAV file. The last tab is communications. If you use software on your device to make or receive phone calls, you can use this to indicate what should happen with other audio activity on your device. By default, volume drops by 80%, but you could change this to mute if you want to make sure that no background sound is picked up during a phone call. We also get audible chimes from our notifications from modern apps in Windows 10. In another lesson on managing notifications, we're going to look at how you can turn off the audible chimes that accompany notifications from modern apps in our settings app. The last thing I want you to be aware of with sound settings are the troubleshooting tools that can be launched from here. Both output and microphones may stop working for a variety of reasons. And if you're having sound troubles, try launching the appropriate troubleshooting wizard to resolve your issue. In this lesson, we've looked at configuring sound settings. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.